This is FYI News 13, brought to you by SSP-TV and the Hazleton Standard Speaker. For your information, State Representative Tara Tuhill speaks to our Lisa Sugart about some concerns she has regarding the Hazleton Area School District. Good day, friends, and welcome. Thanks for watching FYI. I'm Ken Kara, your local information tour guide, and I'm ready to get things going with our headlines from FYI and the Hazleton Standard Speaker. One state lawmaker is hopeful that additional state money will allow one school district in our area to bring back full-day kindergarten. Lisa Sugart has more. The state of Pennsylvania does have a budget. All it needs is the governor's signature right now. Here to tell us about it and also possible impact on the Hazleton Area School District is State Representative Tara Tuhill. Well, let's start at the beginning. We do have a budget and you tell me it is veto proof. Correct. So we have an on-time budget that went through. Republicans and Democrats voted together in a veto-proof majority. So it's bipartisan. Everyone's finally working together. And it's a veto-proof majority. So unlike a lot of the other budgets, uh, the governor cannot veto it. And if he doesn't sign it, it goes into law within 10 days right. after the June 30th deadline when it went through. And the good news with this budget is there is an increase in funding for the for school districts, including the Hazleton Area School District. Yes. So from the state level, uh, one thing that I always look at is if the state has the money uh, and is able to, without raising your taxes, the state is able to give more money than ever before to Hazleton Area School District. And that's something I fight for because we have a lot of needs in Hazleton Area and we want to make sure our children are getting what they deserve. Uh, we want to take care of our kids in the Hazleton Area School District. So right now uh, we were able to get $1.8 million more than the year before. So. Um, it's an on-time budget. That money is going to be coming to the school district. And the school district, most of the crisis financially that the school district is having is due to the increasing pension costs because every year they just skyrocket. Mm -hmm. So every year we give more money to education from the state level and every year the pensions as well are going up. So that's one of the biggest cost drivers that we're up against is the pensions. Um, one thing is with the cut to kindergarten, cutting kindergarten in half. I am completely against that and I'm going to be working with the school district officials to turn the bus around uh, and try to get it so that we can have full day kindergarten as we've been having for as long as we can remember. Well, the school board did vote to cut the kindergarten and also to have a four day week during December, January and February. So what's been the feedback you've been getting at your office because of those cuts in the district? We have in the hundreds people responding uh, on our Facebook, on Twitter, on email. Uh, we're available and uh, through, through the newspaper, uh, through comments, people are writing and we're getting all of that feedback. Uh, people do want to ensure that we keep full day kindergarten. Uh, and, and some people, the naysayers say, well, uh, these parents have these kids, they should you know, babysit your own children. But kindergarten is not babysitting at all. Kindergarten, uh, for many children, these children have had no early learning whatsoever. They cannot spell their names. They don't know their ABCs. And to put them back another year, uh, even farther, is detrimental to them. And the money that you spend now in pre-K, which includes kindergarten, the investment that you make in a child in kindergarten is that child later on is going to cost you less money uh, in the school district. And instead, if you don't spend the money now, uh, you spend more on special education for that child and more for English as a second language on that child for ESL costs, uh, behavioral costs, uh, juvenile delinquency costs, uh, criminal costs, all as that child goes into adulthood. So that investment now in kindergarten is vital and it is definitely something that protects our youth from becoming coming at a later at-risk youth and an adult that's a problem in our society. Okay, and finally, you're planning to meet with school district officials in hopes of changing this. Yes, so we've been having multiple conversations. I've conferenced in to their executive board meeting. Um, we are trying to meet as many of the officials this week as possible because it was a vote that they're saying they did not want to make. Uh, they felt like you know, they're upset that they had to make that vote. And if we can turn the bus around, looking at the funding now that the state's giving, uh, and any way that I can help, 
uh, try to try to remedy this. We're going to try to do. State Representative Tara Tuhill will keep you up to date on what transpires with the Hazleton Area School District. Thank you very much, Lisa. In other news on this Tuesday, he served the city of Hazleton for more than a decade, and sadly, the Hazleton Police Department announced that its beloved canine Grizz has died. According to police, Grizz died on Friday after undergoing surgery and from medical complications. Grizz, whose badge number was 11, was assigned to the patrol division and assigned to Corporal Kirk Wetzel. The 11-year-old German Shepherd was cross-trained in patrol and narcotics detection. Corporal Wetzel says, quote, Grizz was an outstanding partner and companion. His absence will be a tremendous void, unquote. A plaque is being made to honor his service at a ceremony where his badge and ID will be retired. Grizz had been with the city's force since November of 2005. His end of watch was on July 1st, 2016. In other news, it was a busy holiday weekend in downtown Hazleton. The monthly First Friday event featured the Freedom of Speech Tour. It all started at the Standard Speaker and made its way here to our SSP TV studios. We were thrilled to show off our studio and have a little fun at the same time. We let some people on the tour read some scripts and see the magic of green screen technology as we all beamed up to the bridge of Star Trek's classic USS Enterprise Bridge. Hello and welcome to the first Friday Freedom of Speech Tour. Hey, good evening. The city of Hazleton will host a July 4th celebration on Monday. You were at the Standard Speaker so far. What did mm -hmm. they tell you at the Standard Speaker? What did you kind of learn so yeah, far? Yeah, we got, uh, we got uh, the whole complete history from uh, some very knowledgeable people. And uh, we got some visual uh, education on how it goes down, uh, how they put the paper together, and uh, distribution. How important do you think the local media is? A lot of people talk about the internet, these bigger things. Is it, do you think it's still vital for places like this and the standard speaker to be doing what we're doing? Well, sure. I think there's uh, plenty of people who actually read print paper in this town. So I would say here more than anywhere else. Should do all serious interviews on the Bridge of the Enterprise. Special thanks to Max Garcia from Telecaribe, another stop on the tour, for coming to our studio and talking with us. Well, coming up on FYI, I'll tell you about tonight's Little League All-Star matchups and show you the second part of my interview with the Scranton Wilkes-Barre Rail Riders Business Development Executive, Russ Kanzler. After this break, Lisa Sugard has information on how you can take a lap around the Pocono Raceway this weekend in your car, or 100 of them. Stay tuned. This is FYI News 13, brought to you by SSP TV and the Hazleton Standard Speaker. Camp is a great part of the summer for kids, and thanks to Brandon's Forever Home, foster children and kids up for adoption in our area are having a blast this summer. Last week, the kids at BFH's camp enjoyed a Spanish dinner in Brandon's Forever Home's beautiful dining room. They also hit the road for a treat at McDonald's near the Laurel Mall, and they also went to see the movie BFH Big Fr or BFG, lots of BFs in this, Big Friendly Giant, and I would like a review on that one if possible. Earlier this summer, they painted at the next Picasso and met some members of the Hazleton Police and Fire Departments. For more information on everything going on at Brandon's Forever Home, go to brandonsforeverhome.com. This Thursday, the American Red Cross is teaming up with Pocono Raceway for what is the 11th annual blood drive held at Pocono Raceway. Here to tell us all about it is Dave Skutnik. He is the Regional Communications Manager for the American Red Cross. Dave, this is kind of a fun way to donate blood. It sure is. It's a really cool event, Lisa. It actually kicks off with what we call our Ride for the Red, and that's an event where you get to drive the tricky triangle. So the same track that the, uh, the NASCAR guys and the Indy guys all drive around, you for just 10 bucks, 10 bucks, get to show up at the track and you get to take your car one lap around the tricky triangle. That is really cool. Wow, I want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely uh, stop on by and you can do as many laps as you want. Uh, it's just $10 per lap and uh, we've had some people come out and and hand us a $100 bill and just say, let me just keep going. And they, uh, folks f uh, show up in sports cars, Corvettes, Mustangs. We get some really uh, neat, some of the older cars that uh, guys just kind of cruise around on the weekend. And they're like, you know what? I want to 
take my take my Mustang out on the tricky triangle. So they do that. So it's a really fun event. And then after you do the, the ride for the red, you can come over to uh, the grandstand area and that's where we'll be holding our blood drive. And this is one of the biggest blood drives for the Hazleton and Pocono area. It's there at Pocono Raceway and we're actually going into a, a significant blood shortage here at the Red Cross. So really critical that we get everyone out to donate this Thursday. All right, so now if they want to donate on Thursday, do they have to make an appointment? Do they just show up? What do they do? We urge everyone to make an appointment. That makes it easier for us to kind of spread things out, so we make sure we get you in and out quickly. The whole blood donation process takes about an hour. The actual blood donation is about 10 minutes, so it really doesn't take long. So 1-800-RED-CROSS or visit our website at redcrossblood.org, and you plug in the, your information there, and you can make an appointment, and uh, we'll give you that window so that we can get you in and get you out and make sure you get that time to get on the track as well. And there's also lunch and gift cards and other things involved, so tell us about that. We'll be kind of uh, giving away a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, the first, I believe it's 100 or so presenting donors, will get a $10 gift card, a $10 Visa gift card. We'll have uh, lunch being prepared uh, for those folks who can come out during the afternoon. The event starts at 1 o'clock, goes all the way to 7 o'clock in the evening. So if you have time in the afternoon to stop by, we'd love to see you. Or you can come after work, because again, we'll be there all, all the way until 7 p.m. All right. Well, it's a great event for a wonderful cause. Please come out, have some fun at Pocono Raceway, but help out the American Red Cross. As Dave said, the demand is there, the need is there, so please help to meet it. Again, it's taking place this Thursday from 1 to 7. You can go to redcrossblood.org or call 1-800-RED-CROSS. Time now for FYI News 13 Weather. Our weather forecast comes from the National Weather Service. Tonight, partly cloudy with a low around 65 degrees. Wednesday looks sunny with a high in the mid 80s. Wednesday night, partly cloudy, low around 67. On Thursday, we have a 50% chance of showers and thunderstorms after 9 a.m. Our high will be 85 degrees. On Thursday night, 50% chance of showers and thunderstorms before 3 a.m. Our low is 68 degrees. Friday, let's keep that 50% chance of showers and thunderstorms after 9 a.m. High once again in the mid 80s. Guess what? 50% chance of showers and thunderstorms at night, mostly cloudy, low of 67. Same chance of rain on Saturday, partly sunny with a high near 80. And then at night, we're down to 40% chance of showers and thunderstorms, partly cloudy with a low of 61 degrees. Tonight's weather is brought to you by Valley High, the area's oldest ice cream and fast food restaurant. Stop on in for a cold treat, including our ice cream and yogurt, or some hot food, including our burgers, hot dogs, fries, and much more. That's Valley High, Route 93 in West Hazleton. Treat yourself today. Here's our home of the week at Eagle Rock Resort with beautiful lake views, multi-tiered treks, decks, and an open floor plan that washes the home with sunlight. This four-bedroom, three-bath home would be the perfect choice for your vacation. Just walking distance to the beach and down the street from the ski slopes. Enjoy all the amenities of Eagle Rock, including their new aquatic center coming in 2017 with four pools under one roof. If you're interested, call 570-470-5725. Two, five. And before we hit the break, here's your midday winning Pennsylvania lottery numbers. Pick 2, 2, 1, pick 3, 0, 8, 4, pick 4, 2, 1, 8, 2, and pick 5, 7, 3, 9, 2, 3. The sports cast is coming up next, but let's get more legal information with Law Talk. Hello again and welcome to Law Talk. Today we're going to talk about another part of our uh, auto insurance coverage. It's, uh, it's a very important part, a part that you don't have to buy, a part that you're not required to buy by law, but it's a part of the coverage that we think is very important, and that is uninsured motorist coverage and underinsured motorist coverage, and Alexis will tell you about that. Uninsured and underinsurance coverage uh, is not mandated by Pennsylvania law, so if you're filling out your insurance paperwork, you're looking to get insurance for a vehicle, you're not mandated to get the un- or underinsurance coverage. Uh, we strongly advise our clients to get the un- and underinsurance coverage for several reasons. Uh, one being individuals, we have deadbeat drivers, for example. You have a driver who wants to get a vehicle, wants to get their registration, they have car insurance, and then a couple months later they decide not to pay the premiums. Therefore, they become uninsured. If you're hit by an uninsured driver and you don't have uninsured coverage, 
then there's no remedy for you. There's no claim that you can take for recovery regarding that, inj regarding that accident. Uh, for underinsurance coverage, if you're struck by somebody who has the minimal coverage, which would be $15,000, and you have significant injuries, then you're also in a tight spot because if you don't have underinsurance coverage, you're not able to make a claim for additional recovery. And in Pennsylvania, the law says that $15,000 is the minimum coverage that one needs to have in order to be an insured driver on the road. Uh, having said that, if you're struck with some, by somebody who has minimal coverage, that being $15,000, you have significant injuries, you have significant economic losses in the form of wage loss, you're not able to make uh, a claim for recovery of that with your own insurance if you don't have the underinsurance coverage. So it's important to have both un- and underinsurance coverage as part of your insurance policy when you're looking at those options. This is FYI News 13 Sports. The fireworks continue down the valley tonight in the District 18, 11, and 12-year-old Little League Tournament. Let's get you caught up on everything with the FYI Standard Speaker Scoreboard. Valley East will host Valley West in the winner's bracket final at Valley East Field at 6 p.m. The East Siders have scored 33 runs in three games so far, and the West Siders have put up 25 runs in two games. Whoever loses this game will face the winner of Tamaqua and Franklin Township in the loser's bracket on Thursday and then everything will be set up for the championship round this weekend. In District 24, Ashland is our only local team right now to have a spot clinched in this weekend's quarterfinals after pole play. They play St. Clair, Port Carbon, New Philadelphia in a key game for SPN in pole play tonight. That's in pole four. SPN is one and one and a win would go a long way in helping them advance. Shenandoah is sitting pretty in pole three at two and zero, oh, and they can clinch a spot in the quarters tonight with a victory. Monoy City is looking for their first win in pole two against Pottsville Rotary. Joe Madden and the Cubs, they busted out of a four-game losing streak on the 4th of July with a 10-4 win over the Reds. They have six games left until the All-Star break and they have a nine-game lead over the Cardinals in the NL Central. The Rail Riders beat their Pennsylvania rivals, the Iron Pigs, on Monday. Back in May, I sat down with the Rail Riders business development executive and former major leaguer Russ Kanzler, a.k.a. the Cunningham Crusher, because, well, he's from Cunningham and he can crush a baseball. Along with helping build the Rail Riders brand in our area, he's also providing commentary during their televised games. Enough of me. Here's more from my interview with Kanzler. Another thing you're doing is broadcasting, and Russ, I told you this before, I thought you would be perfect for it. My question is, did you have an interview with Sam LaSant before here for my job, before this interview, and how's that end going? I didn't want to bring it up, but they did offer me your job. I had to turn it down. I had to turn it down. I appreciate respect that. respect for you. No, no I'm, I'm really enjoying it. Um, you, you almost forget that you're working. You're sitting up in a booth, and you're just hanging out with another guy who likes baseball, and you're, and you're talking baseball for a couple hours. And I think that's the scary thing, too, because you can do it for a while and you forget that you're on TV uh, and you have some of that bar conversation that you might not want to be on uh, on cable television. But uh, no, I, I really enjoy it. And I think, um, you know, with my playing background, if I can give the fans a little insight to what's going on in the field and what the players are thinking, um, I'm doing my job. Yeah. Do you see things a little bit differently up there in the press box or is it pretty much, you know, the game in that or what's different about it, I guess is what I'm asking. I think the one thing is you don't want to come off as the guy who has it all figured out about mm -hmm. baseball. And I think that's the slippery slope that former players fall into when they're broadcasting is they forget how hard it was so it's fresh in my mind I know I know how hard the game is I just try to give a realistic approach to what's going on in the field and when mis mistakes happen we try to give a, an outlook as to hey what what went wrong here and what the player could have done differently because I always try to imagine a younger player listening to the game and what they could be picking up and what they could learn because that's how I learned as a, as a kid was from watching games I used to watch the Braves on TBS every night uh, so that's that's what you try to do. You try to not. You don't want to come off as as you know everything. You just try to give some good insight into what the player might be doing. Did you ever pay attention to the broadcast? I know, like I follow the Red Sox. I know Dustin Pedroia will watch Nesson every now and then and be oh, like, yeah. "Hey, Jerry, I heard you saying this or that." Did you ever, yeah. through your time through AAA or anything, get to know the guys and be like, "Hey, what's going on?" Or did you listen yeah. to some things? Sure. Yeah, you do. You do listen, and especially those nights that you're DH and you're in and out of the clubhouse <laughs> and you hear what they're saying about you. So I think. Understanding that, uh, you just have to be careful with what you're saying because, look, baseball is the hardest sport to play. Hitting is very tough. Pitching is very tough. So you don't want to be too hard on, on those guys. 
because um, I think that's where you might lose their respect a little bit uh, and, and feel like you've, you've lost touch with how hard it is to play the game. Hey, if you were talking to your 18-year-old self now, looking back, what would you say about baseball? It's just enjoy the experience because it goes quick, and it's so funny how it comes full circle. I can remember being back in high school and hearing Jeff Antolik tell me, hey, at one point you're going to have to hang your cleats up, so take advantage of it, enjoy every day, work hard, and you're thinking, ah, what's he done? I'm going to play forever. Uh, so that, that really is the message that I try to tell young kids is squeeze, squeeze everything you can out of, the, out of this game. Put all your energy and effort into that if that's what you want to be, whether it's playing in college or, or wanting to get to the next level. Because it does go quick, and you have to work in the real world now. Eventually, you can't. I ran from it for 12 years, so <laughs> now i got to put my big boy pants on and, and get in the real world. I kept saying guys, but there's a lot of very good female play-by-play -play and color commentators out there as well. Remember, Hazleton Day is coming up in August at PNC Field in Music. Help Russ Kanzler sell out this stadium and show off the Hazleton area as the Rail Riders take on the Lehigh Valley Iron Pigs on August 9th. Now, you did see some video of Kanzler coaching the Valley West 9- and 10-year-old Little League All-Stars, and we will have that complete story on the Season 3 premiere of Out of Left Field coming soon. FYI, we'll be right back. Happy Wing Night! It's Wing Night at Bottlenecks. Get $2 off your order of wings or all-you-can-eat wings and boneless wings for only $14.95. Bottlenecks wings are voted best wings in the area year after year. Good evening, everyone, and here's tonight's Talk of the Town report. First night, Holy Rosary Parish of Hazleton will be holding a free community luncheon Saturday, July 9th from 10.30 a.m. to noon at Catholic Social Services. CSS is located at 214 West Walnut Street, and all are welcome to attend. The parish would like to thank the Hazleton Rotary Club and the Weinberg Northeast Regional Food Bank. For info, just call 570-459-6390. And finally, the Holy Name of Jesus Parish at Transfiguration Church will be holding their annual picnic July 15th, 16th, and 17th. The full picnic will be open all three days and be held rain or shine under the tents. They'll be having great homemade food, entertainment, tricky trays, raffles, games, bingos, and much more. Transfiguration is located at 213 West Green Street in West Hazleton. At tonight's Talk of the Town. News 13 would like to send sincere condolences to the family and friends of these recently departed. Nicholas R. Dubik Jr. of Scranton. Funeral is Wednesday at 10.30 a.m. from the Butler Chapel of Cropton Hughes Funeral Home. Friends may call Wednesday from 9.30 to 10.30 a.m. Carol J. Sanud of Drums. Funeral is Thursday at 10 a.m. from the Butler Chapel of the Cropton Hughes Funeral Home. Friends may call Wednesday from 7 to 9 p.m. Robert W. DeConha of Freeland. Funeral is Thursday at 10 a.m. from the McNulty Funeral Home. Friends may call Wednesday from 6 to 9 p.m. and Thursday from 9 to 10 a.m. James J. Doyle Jr. of Zion Grove. Mass is Thursday at 10 a.m. at the St. Gabriel's Church. Friends may call Thursday from 9 to 10 a.m. at the church. Arrangements are under the direction of the Boyle Funeral Home. And Alma Mae Young of Hazleton. Funeral is Thursday at 10 a.m. at the Christ Lutheran Church. Friends may call at the church from 9 to 10 a.m. The Rosenstock Funeral Home is assisting the family with the arrangements. Attention pay-per-view subscribers, if you see your name right now on News 13, you'll have 13 minutes to call in and win a free movie from Service Electric Cablevision. Our winner tonight is Bonnie Boyer of New Ringle. Bonnie, if you're watching, give us a call, 570-455-7267, extension 104. An Italian study shows that pasta is not directly related to obesity. So I'm off to Rostis's. Take it easy, everyone. See you tomorrow.